there. Welcome in to the latest edition of the SAU Softball Coaches Show. I'm Daniel Gagos, joined alongside head softball coach Jason Anderson. And coach, we've reached uh, the point of the season, final regular season weekend of the season. You're back at home to close it out. Uh, where you've enjoyed a lot of great success at home. First year of the new softball complex, Dawson Field, the Mule Rider Softball Complex. This weekend you'll be welcoming in East Central, uh, a team over the last few years has been one of the top teams in the Great American Conference. Uh, they're, they're a tough team despite what their, their one-loss record may be. They've got a couple of standout players uh, offensively and also in the circle. So uh, the anticipation for this series, uh, it, it appears it'll be a good one. Before, before we get into that, let's take a step back to last weekend. Um, Really, it was the second consecutive weekend of tough road trips for you and your Lady Mule Rider team. The weekend prior, you go to uh, number five ranked Arkansas Tech, come away with the series split there. Go back on the road to Southeastern Oklahoma. The team is a third in the conference right now. And you win three out of four, winning the first three games. Just unable to, to secure the, the series sweep there at the end, dropping the final game. But let's go ahead and start with the first, first part of that on the first day of the series. Two shutouts. Uh, things went well, obviously. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about that. Oh, it was a good weekend for us overall. Like you said, we, uh, all these coaching shows that we do, and always talking about we, especially on the road, but at all times in this conference, we want to go get three or four. So when you come out day one on the road at Southeastern, it's a very good team, uh, very tough, always tough, been to many regional tournaments in, in their history, and so uh, you get two shutouts on day one and, and win, and you put yourself in a position that, hey, I mean, you can split and you're going to win the series, and that's I think that puts us in a great position, both Kimmy and uh, Kaylee gave us great outings there. We were able to score some runs. And then you come out day two and you kind of win a slugfest in game one. Uh, wind was blowing straight out to left. You know, it was kind of one of those deals. Umps were making them put it on the plate. So uh, kind of for both sides of us, it was more of an offensive day. And then dropped the last one. Um, didn't hit as well as I thought we should. Left a lot of runners on base. But like I said before, you step back in the overall scheme of things. If you can go on the road to southeastern Oklahoma and take three or four, I feel like that's definitely a win, and that's what we wanted to do that weekend. Yeah, those last two weekends definitely were – the most, you know, maybe the hardest weekends yeah. if you looked at it on paper, especially the way the season was planning out. Your team obviously uh, was up to the challenge winning five of those games. Um, and like you said, doing those types of things set you up for where you want to go in terms of postseason play. Right. You, stand, you stand firmly in second place in the conference going into the final weekend. Will likely be the number two seed going into the conference tournament. But also let's talk about regional rankings. Uh, the second official rankings came out earlier this week. You entered the rankings or the first week at number two some reason take a, a dip back mm -hmm. to number three but you're still right there um, obviously you got to think that it might be a coin toss between anybody between two to maybe even five within right. the central region in softball so talk about that the central region ranking still in the thick of it well I mean like I said I don't uh, really agree with that we dropped down third but obviously I'm not on that committee and don't understand if you look at our RPI or over our RPI we're still second in the region and in my opinion should be ranked second but I think the good thing about that is is we control our own destiny I mean we still got four tough games this weekend at home and then we have a conference tournament and we're going to get to face the team that's right in front of us in Arkansas Tech um, so we control our own destiny as it comes to the regional ranking stuff there are a lot of teams that right there the Northwest Missouri that's now two and Missouri Western and some of those one through five teams four or five like you're talking about they all have series as well this weekend they got four games left to play plus their conference tournament so a lot of moving and shaking can take place in that poll I do like where we're at right now I've said all along from day one that if we can put ourselves in a position to be in those top two seeds closing out the year that we get a chance to host here with the new complex and the community and everything I think would be awesome for us and and the girls getting to play at home but uh, we still have work to take care of. Our, our ultimate goal is to obviously make an NCAA postseason. We'd like to win the conference tournament. I think us being having the two seed fairly secure, like you said, puts us in a position to, to make a run at the conference championship, and then we'll go in the NCAA postseason. Hopefully we're hosting it. You know, and another ranking, uh, national rankings again came out same time as the regional rankings, third straight week, the team is ranked. Uh, you, held, you held steady at number 20. I uh, thought there may have been a little bit of improvement there, but hold steady at, at number 20. But a more important announcement also came out on Wednesday from the NFCA. Uh, one of your players, uh, Brooke Goad, sophomore outfielder, was named as one of uh, the top 25 finalists for National D2 Player of the Year, uh, one of only two players in the Great American Conference to make that list. Talk about Brooke, uh, just the accomplishment on its own, making that top 25 finalist list. Well, Brooke's been through a lot. Like you said, she came in here as a freshman and, and had a great season going and had some injuries, and same thing last year was two weeks in, and uh, same had, had injuries, and which ended her season there. So uh, we knew what kind of player Brooke was. Obviously, she wasn't on any preseason watch list and things like that because of the year before, because of her being injured and being basically redshirting medically. But uh, Brooke's a great hitter. Her approach, 
at the plate uh, is, is always spot on. She steps in the box and she knows what she wants to do. She has a lot of power. She'll hit some gaps. Obviously, with the 20 home runs, average over 400 right now was going to get you RBIs. And, and she is a hitter that, um, that, that other lineups, or other pitching staff, they don't want to face her. And it's plain and simple. I think you see that by the I mean, she comes out first day against Southeastern and hits several home runs. And then she got walked nine times in a row. Uh, so um, we are... Excited for her. It's a great honor. Uh, not surprised. Like I said, I know the kind of player that Brooke is and what she can do in the, at the plate and what she can do uh, day in, day out for us as we produce, our, uh, produce RBIs and hit home runs. Now let's shift the focus to this upcoming weekend. We've talked a little bit about it. you got East Central coming in for a four-game series. Closing out the regular season for both teams, East Central has also clinched a spot into the tournament. Uh, so they're going to be playing to, to maybe better their seating. Um, and this is going to be a conference tournament. If we jump a little bit further ahead, I think one through eight, top to bottom, it's going to be a very competitive tournament. So, uh, and that will be obviously on display this weekend against East Central. Talk to us about that matchup. What do you, what do you kind of foresee? Well, they're defending conference champs uh, with several of the same faces that they had on their team last year. They have a same couple, the same players, uh, pitchers in the circle, have a couple of same girls there in the middle of their lineup. They're going to hit it well. They've got some tough hitters, and they have some good pitchers. Um, so we're going to have to score some runs. Uh, I feel like if we can score runs and get our pitching staff four to five a game, something like that, and then we can keep them off the board, you know, then we'll be good. It's it's a tough four-game series. Obviously, we're going into it. We want to win the series and, and hopefully sweep it, you know, win all four games. So that's our plan. But like you said, this conference tournament, I know we'll talk about that more later, maybe next week, whatever, is going to be a tough one. I feel top to bottom, one through eight, everybody has a pitcher that can beat anybody in the conference. And, and you know, that's where it starts with our sport is it starts in the circle. So if you've got a pitcher that can keep you in the game, uh, you always got a chance. So I think it's going to be as competitive as it's ever been, top to bottom, and uh, I'm looking forward to that as well in a couple weeks. Appreciate it very much for your time. Again, that's head softball coach Jason Anderson. He and his Lady Mule Rider softball team back at home for the final regular season conference weekend. This weekend, take it on East Central. Four-game series will start on Saturday with a doubleheader beginning at 1. They'll conclude the series with another doubleheader on Sunday beginning at noon. Prior to Saturday's doubleheader will be Senior Day celebration. Uh, nine seniors yes. on this on this year's ball club. Uh, they've meant a lot to the program, helped to get it to where it is currently, and also uh, in in years to come. So we'll be honoring those nine seniors. Be sure to come out early for that because it'll be again be at the beginning or prior to rather the uh, doubleheader on Saturday. Uh, for head coach Jason Anderson, we appreciate it, coach, and uh, best of luck. All right, thank you.